Hi and welcome to the Barefoot Driver YouTube channel. In this video I'm going to show you how to repaint some steel wheels in two-tone black and white. The wheels I'm actually doing it from a beetle but any steel wheels you've got the process will be exactly the same. Hope you find this useful. Any questions feel free to comment below and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. So this is the candidate. This is my 1970 1500 beetle. As you can see, I've already repainted the rear wheels and put some nice new Vredestein, Vredestein even, Sprint Classics on there from Vintage Tires, who were very helpful. Uh, you can see what was the state of play when I bought the car. Original wheels, bit of a state. Um, some mismatched trim rings on the car as well, which didn't really help the overall look. So now I'm going to show you how detail the wheels in paint. Here you can see I'm in the process of masking the wheel and obviously it's ideal to remove the tyres uh, but if you can't do that then you need to mask them off. Um, so obviously I've already painted the centre of this wheel black but before I did that I masked up in the edges of the tyres so it's similar to the process of masking up here where you, you've got to slide the masking tape under the lip and then let it sit down but obviously you've got to do it in lots of small pieces uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill this center piece in because I've, I've painted the center of the wheels and left them to dry for at least 48 hours um, and now I'm going to paint the the rim of the wheel uh, VW cloud white I think this this wheel is um, so now I'm going to mask up the rest of the wheel so now I've cut out a square of masking paper as you can see uh, it's quite a bit bigger than the wheel itself, the centre of the wheel itself what I'm basically going to do is just fold and tape down as I go I've got, obviously got lots of little bits of masking tape ready 
Um, so yeah, here we go. We're just going to basically take a piece of tape and fix down to the other masked area and then we'll fold the other area over and mask as we go. So you can see now I'm making some progress. Uh, most of the wheel is masked off already. Just a word on masking tape. This one I'm using is a Tetrasil, which you can see there. Um, 3M is also pretty good. This this stuff I use from a, a local DIY store and it was pretty cheap and it's it's too low tack really and it's, it's starting to peel so I'm gonna have to remedy that before I paint the wheel. Um, obviously before we mask anything up, you wanna prep the wheels so it depends how bad they are. Sometimes it might be best to get them sandblasted uh, on this occasion the wheels were pretty good so I just scuffed them up with 80 grit paper and then went up to 240 before I put on the high build primer. Uh, let the high build primer dry for at least 24 hours before you do some sanding on it take out any imperfections. Um, this one I'm just going to finish up the masking and then we're ready to paint. So now we've got all the wheel masked up and I've got a little bit of 600 grit wet and dry that I'm soaking in some water as you can see I'm wearing gloves because that's how I like to work uh, what we're going to do now where the overspray from the black paint is on the wheels we basically need to flat that, da flat that down <laughs> um, before we can paint the white on there otherwise it'll just come straight off again so we're basically going to gently wet sand with 600 grit <laughs> Being really careful to just flat the paint and not go through the primer. If we go through the primer, obviously we're going to have to put some more primer on there before we, we get the paint on there, otherwise it's going to rust. So just gently flat it back. Keep, keep dipping in the water again. Don't want to use too much water. I probably should have done this before I masked the wheels. You basically just want to flap the, the paint back enough to key the area so the new paint will take. So I've now sanded the wheels uh, with the 600 grit. I've also dried them off. Uh, just basically want to get the paint flat enough to accept the primer and the next coat of paint. Don't need to go mad. But this is where I attempt to show you how to put some primer on on a windy day whilst holding the camera, so um, bear with me. What I'm trying to do is uh, just kind of show you the technique that, that I use. Basically just pulse the can. You need to obviously angle the, the head of the can to get into small areas. You don't want to put too much on. As you can see I've done most of the rest of the wheel. You don't need to go crazy. Just obviously need to cover any areas that might be bare metal so that it doesn't rust once you've actually done it. Now what I'll do with this because I'm working in the winter as you can see I've got a nice kneeling pad there as well I'm going to use my vintage heat gun just to flash off that paint so it doesn't get moisture in it. You can see I'm angling the head of the heat gun and keep moving it as I go do is just flash this off for a couple of minutes and then once that's done I'm going to leave it to dry for a few hours before I attempt to do anything else with it. And there we have a wheel that I've managed to not mess up. So here's a wheel with the prime put on. I used this which is Pro XL high build. Uh, other primers obviously are available. Uh, Try to get as, as thin a coat on as possible. Um, what you want to do is just give it a uniform colour so when you put the white on, any any light colour that you're painting really needs a uniform colour of primer underneath otherwise you're going to end up with patchy, uh, patchy paint and you're going to have to use a lot more coats. As you can see it's a bit windy here. I'm, I'm working outside so I'm going to show you a wheel that I messed up earlier. Uh, Basically just the paint went into bubbles and I applied too much and now I've got sags in the paint so I'm going to need to leave that one at least 24 hours to go off so I can wet sand it back 
and have another go. With the best one in the world, you're going to mess up at times, uh, but you just need to have some patience and give it another go. So I'm using the heat gun here, working outside in winter in the UK, so it's not ideal, but the heat gun can speed things up a little bit. You're just not going to focus it in one area too much and be really careful that you don't bubble the paint, otherwise you'll have to start again. Just let that dry off for quite a while. If you can, maybe take it indoors to dry off for a bit longer before you put the top coats on. So here you have the wheel I'm primed. We've got some custom mixed paint here. Um, that's L581, which is cloud white, which was correct for VW rims up to 1969. Uh, I used LD43 grey black on the centres. Give it a, a good shake for a couple of minutes as it tells you on the instructions. And then just about done with that, so we're just going to show you how to put some paint on the wheels, hopefully without messing it up as I'm holding the camera at the same time. So here you go. Start with it. Slights. It's just a thin coat to begin with. What some people do is they put a really thick coats on there to start with and then they wonder why they get a really bad paint reaction. So I'm just going to put a thin coat all over like that. A nice little bit of leaf settled in there already, which we'll address later. And now we're going to just heat it up, flash dry it with the heat gun. You can skip this step if the weather's warm. This is, this is about 6 degrees C here right now, so just going to flash dry that off a little bit. Don't focus it into in one area too much, otherwise you'll wrinkle the paint. Flash dry it off and then we can leave it probably about another five to ten minutes and apply a second coat. So here we are, about to do the second coat. Can put that on a little bit thicker now. As you can see I'm holding the can quite close to the job at hand. Keep angling the head. The mistake a lot of people make is by following the instructions on aerosols. And they tell you to hold it 30 centimeters from the job that you're doing. All that really does is waste paint and gives you a typical aerosol finish. As you can see, I'm applying just enough paint here so that it doesn't run or sag. But I'm applying it thick enough so that it gets a nice gloss straight out of the can. So that's enough for the second coat. Maybe a little bit in there and then we're going to flash dry it again. Time for the third coat, hopefully the final coat. What I'm going to do is just try to make sure I get into all the little different areas and that means angling the can in different ways. Try not to get the paint built up too much in any one area. Move around the wheel. going to need to do is try and get in this room here which is the trickiest bit really As you can hear when I tip the can on one side it's, it doesn't want to work as well just a little bit too much on there don't be tempted to panic if you get a little bit too much paint on Sometimes it can just be remedied. Sometimes it'll just heal itself. Other times you may have to wet sand it back and do another coat. Or sometimes you might just be able to wet sand and, and polish it afterwards. After all, this is just a, a daily driver job we're doing. We could go for perfection. If we were doing that, we'd have probably removed the tyres. Uh, but a job like this will stand up for many years and make the car a lot prettier as a result. Okay now at some point before the wheels are completely dry you need to carefully start 
unmasking things probably more carefully than that really um, you don't really want to touch the paint so I'm going to put the camera down and try and sort this mess out so there we can go and just gently peel away the masking paper be really careful not to mess up the paint probably should have got rid of the gloves and again up and away on the paint this has had about half an hour to dry so far but don't want to let the paint go completely hard before taking the masking off otherwise you risk cracking it obviously just gently peel away the paint yeah, sorry the masking paper and you should be left with good results as you can see I've got the wheel unmasked now so um, the trickiest bit is normally the valve so I'm going to use one of these little blades to just gently slit around where the valve hole is and peel back the paper so I've used one of these blades just to slit the masking paper around the valve and now I'm just gently peeling it away and then you can stand back and marvel at your amazing looking wheels. So one area that can cause you a problem once you've painted your wheels is the area where the nut or bolt seats into the wheel. If you don't address this now, I've seen it where this chips away loosens the wheel bolt and the wheel comes off so what I'm going to use is a ball attachment stone on the drill and just give it a quick just take it back to bare metal in those areas so here you have the finished product Amazing how much difference a clean set of wheels and tyres make to the car.